Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Now today I have an introduction to a special new feature that Divi snuck in and it's related to the display conditions feature and we're going to show you how you can show or hide a module based on the value of a custom field. This is brand new. It just slipped in here. Let's take a look and I'll show you how to do this with some use cases. All right, so go ahead and go over to the blog post. I have the link in the description in YouTube um, if you're there. So anyway, this new feature came in 4.14.3, which was a really buggy update. So make sure you're past that. But the point is, it, it's not like one of the major updates. It wasn't like 4.15, you know, it's 4.14.3 that it showed up. So basically it's, it's enabling us it's adding a new feature to the conditions that's we're already there, all right? And we talked about that in another video, so if you wanna check that out, uh, it, was, it was actually pretty recently. So custom fields, you can um, use a plugin or you can use the default ones that come in Divi, and you may not know that, or in WordPress, I guess. Um, you may not have known that, and I'll just show you that real quick. I have a, some information here. Now this tutorial is not about custom fields. It's not about how to create custom fields in Divi or anything like that. That would be a separate video. I'm showing you how to use the conditions feature with custom fields. If we go over to a sample website, uh, I'm gonna show you the back end here. Now I've already enabled the custom fields. You click this dot menu, then preferences, and then panels, and then custom fields. Okay, and they show up right here. So right here I have one and I called it um, my custom link. In fact, let's just say Nelson's custom link um, just to, to be very clear with that. And I, the value, I've, I've put a value in. Now, um, the value would be relevant to the page or whatever, whatever you're using these for. Um, but in my case, I will either have one here or I won't. And that's, I guess, obvious. But um, in the builder here, I want to show you. All right, so on the front end, I've added a button module. And I want the link... When I click this button, I want it to go to the value of that custom field. So right here, Nelson's custom link, and boom, I'm done. So now when I click this, it's going to go there. But what if there's no value in the custom field? Well, let me show you. If I go in here, advanced tab, conditions, um, I put it in here already, but anyway. So if I open up the module, go to the advanced tab, to the conditions. Again, we had a separate video tutorial on this. When I click to add a new condition, I will see a new option called custom field. This was not here before. So right here, my first option, you can see a list of options here, and this will, this will depend on what I select. So if it's on manual custom field name, I would have to put in the name of the field. Well, I don't remember it offhand, um, so I'm going to just pick the name. So right here, Nelson's custom link. So it's going to automatically pull in that one and that value. Now, if that value is, or is not, or contains, does not contain, is any value at all, or has no value, is greater than, is less than, I can choose here. The most common one I think will be is any value. I'm going to pick that one, and I'm done. So this, this button module will display if Nelson's custom link has a value. Pretty simple, right? So let's, let's exit here. I don't want it. I don't want it displaying if there's no value, right? So there's the button. It's great. It's showing fine. Uh, and I had a condition on that text, so ignore that. All right. Let me show you what happens if I remove that value, right here. Let's get rid of it. No value there. Now watch. No button. That's the feature in a nutshell. All right, I'm gonna show you a use case for this. All right, so I'm gonna show you something here. Um, MillerFamilyAdventure.com. This is a website my wife and I are making. It's not really done. <laughs> um, basically, it's a directory of places we like to go exploring, waterfalls, state parks, and all kinds of stuff, right? And it's a, it's a directory. Um, if you were to click on like all places, you, you kind of see the gist of how it works. Here's the places. So here's the map, we have pins here. You click on a pin, it gives you information. You can click to go to view it and all that. But anyway, um, the point here is that there's all these places and they all have different things to show about them. Because, you know, a state park may have different fields than a waterfall or an overlook or whatever. Um, so let me just show you here. I'm going to use the, this one as an example. 
I have featured image and all that. This is that's not important, but you can see here's a, a problem. Um, here I have like the parking GPS coordinates, and then uh, in the back end, I'll just show you. I have all these custom fields. Here's that. There's that. I have a description of how to get there. Here's the map. Here's the pin. Here's the my title. Here's my own personal comments. My own personal rating. My wife's comments and ratings. Images. Whatever. Okay. You get you get the idea. But I'm using all of these custom fields right here. So what I want to do is go in the theme builder. Now this is a great use case for this. Um, here's a good one. So um, not all of my places need a parking GPS location. Some things are within other places or whatever the case is. A state park, you don't. There's not really like a parking place. A waterfall, yes. So what I want to do is I don't even want this module to even appear at all. If I put in a GPS coordinate for that place, <laughs> okay. And I'm in the theme builder template that applies to all places. So let's go into condition, advanced tab, conditions, add condition, custom field. Now I'm going to have to use manual custom field name because we're using advanced custom fields, okay? So if I go over here to the field name, so right here's the one I want. Copy that field name, see that? Field name. Put that right there. And I'm going to say, is any value? Okay, so if there's any GPS coordinate in my place, then this whole blurb will show. Otherwise, it'll hide. All right, and again, we're checking here. We do have um, the link here. So I'm just going to remove it for illustrative purposes here. Now I'm going to view this place. Now let's see if that's there. It's not there. Um, the waterfall location's here, but the parking location is gone. And that's great. It's very dynamic now. Um, so whether I put it in or not, now I, I can rest easy knowing that my modules will show or hide based on that, right? So if I haven't gotten to it yet or whatever, I can just, you know, like I said, I'll just be happy knowing that it's, it's fine, all right? I'm going to show you one more. So right here, we have, like, I've kind of put my own comments in, like, a rating and then, like, a comment title. <laughs> Um, the way this is built, this is a blurb module and this is a text module and it's inside of a column. So this background block is like in the column. So there's like three things. Now I could make a condition for all three items. That would be annoying. So like here I could do the, the, the blurb and then the text. But I'm going to go into the, the column itself. Watch this. So I'm going to make a condition here. Custom field. Oh, and I got to get the value here. Um, Tasha's comments is the value, or yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm the name, the name, and if there's any value, if is any value, then this whole column will show or hide. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see what happens when I refresh this page. Again, we know there's nothing in there for her. She hasn't gotten to it yet, and there we go. So now we can start publishing places. Sometimes we kind of wait we're like holding off to publish a place because we're worried, well, I don't have that value for that field yet. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't look up the description or I didn't write my my comments how to get there. You know, I didn't put the map location in or I haven't added photos or I haven't added my, the description, all these things. And really what we need to do now is go through this website and make everything conditional and everything's already dynamic. Um, but these conditions allow me to do one more thing. This was in the initial release. Um, it's, I'm, I already reported it. They'll fix that, but um, yeah. So it's, it's really awesome to be able to just, now I can go through and build this site and never worry because the modules will show accordingly. I'm excited to hear how you'll use this. So be creative, think outside the box and, and let me know how you're using the custom fields with conditions. You know, I think there's just, it's just wide open. And if you enjoyed this kind of tutorial, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. That actually really helps, uh, especially this kind of video where it's kind of like breaking the news, if you might say, uh, a new feature that Divi has that's super helpful. Like people ask about this. I had a tutorial ready to go using jQuery for this exact thing. And it was really simple. Um, I mean, it was pretty simple. A couple of lines of code for each type of module. Um, but this, you know, having it right in that interface, is, is, this is great. This is exciting. Um, let me know if um, you're going to use this. And, and I'd love to hear, like, some ideas that are, like, 
you know, really good use cases. All right, I do this every week, so be sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you in our next video.